Hey guys, welcome to One for the Road, where we navigate sobriety, recovery, and life in general. Tune in as we share our experience and opinions while answering any questions you have. Hi, I'm Marissa. It's my co-host, Judy. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, all right, Judy, are you ready for your topic today? I Sure. Yes, I have coffee. Sock it to me. All right. So today I wanted to talk about um, asking for help. Asking for help. I like when I, I just keep repeating your question every time you do this. <laughs> It's like, you're like, you're not speaking English. And so I need to repeat it in order to determine, right. I don't know what. Um, yeah, I don't. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm, I'm asking for help is important. I'd like to go on the record as saying that. I'm going to also apologize right off the bat for any song or drilling you made here because I have deck work being done. Um, yeah, I, asking for help is important. Um it's a struggle of mine. I don't do that well. Self-sufficiency rules my life and always has. Um, you know, why, you know, why do I need to ask somebody else? Because there's also an expectation factor and a disappointment factor. And, you know, right. I'm, re- I'm reminded of, you know, back when my children who are all adults now and will not be happy that I'm going to bring this up, but, you know, one sorry, of those Kate, things, <laughs> you know, just sorry, guys, <laughs> going right under a bus. But it's one of those things where I say, could you, you know, you give kids chores for sure, right? So, hey, could you vacuum or, hey, do those dishes, you know, and then, you know, shit goes south real quick. And then I'm like, oh, get out of the way. I'll just do it. I do was it thinking, nice. To, I'll do it right, myself. For sure. And I know <laughs> that that's probably not that, but that's just a baseline of what it's like for me. I walk in around the house going, nobody fucking helps, you know? What's up? And then, you know, but, and then, and then the reply would come back. Well, you don't let us, right? Like you okay. ask for help and then you do it yourself because, and, and that's how I operated for a great majority of my life. You know, right. I just am going to do it myself. However, there's been that change, right? Through getting sober and being in recovery, I do ask for help today, especially when it hurts really bad, right? Like I have to get to a certain pain level, like, you know, that threshold where I can no longer take it. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm making some phone calls. Now I'm sharing what's going on. And now I'm asking for help. I don't recommend that. I just want to go on the record. What about when you were, so like when you were getting sober, right? Like when you had that moment when you were like, okay, it's time to get sober. Like, was there any was there any like, hey, I need help, right? Like I mm. that actual admittance, like never mind the dishes or whatever, which is still something, <laughs> still a thing. But in the sense of like getting sober, yeah. you know, yeah. You know, what did that look like? I well, thanks for bringing me back on topic, first of all, because I because <laughs> that because that's I guess why we're here today, you know, sobriety and recovery. Um yeah, I, the, the way it looked like for me, you know, as I tried to do it, you know, I mentioned dry time, you know, um, right. or, and, you know, when I, on my last dry drunk, right, that was, I was like in a two year spread of being dry. I had had neck surgery and I was separated from my soon to be ex-husband and a friend stepped by just to see how I was doing. And And I said, you know, hey, I'm doing this, you know, not drinking thing and this not drugging thing, but I've got the screaming thing that started now inside. Right. Mm -hmm. And 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 I can't live with the screaming and I can't live with drinking and drugging. And I don't know what to do. And he who is in recovery um, laid out some information for me. Right. And I had a lot of excuses about going into a 12 step program you know, my ex is there. I'm not going to go. And how can I talk to the people? And he knows that, you know, I just had all the excuses. Sure. And so in asking for this help, that's what asking for help looked like for me. Right. I said what was going on inside of me and I can't live with the screaming, but I will die if I use again. And so he came up with the, yeah, he came up with, um, he had a friend who goes to another 12 step program. And so I attended that. Um, 
And so that's what asking for help looked like for me when I first got sober. And then, of course, I went back out and came back. And I knew when I came back, I went right in and said, I can't do this. I need help. And th- and that was that pain part, that pain yeah. I talked about. It was enough, you know. So that's what it looked like for me. Um, what about you? <laughs> so <laughs> this is my favorite. This is one of my favorite stories. And I have to I have to tell it. Because it's just it's just one of those moments uh, that were like so pivotal in my life that I didn't realize it was pivotal in my life until I looked back on it later. But, you know, my story for drinking and whatnot ended up, you know, landing me in the hospital a couple of times, you know, and uh, there was this one specific time. Um, I don't think it was the first time by any means, but um, my sister, who's so supportive, right? I talk about her all the time love her dearly. Yeah. Um, you know, I was in the hospital laying in the hospital bed and she came in and in the kindest way she possibly could, that's not how I heard it at the time. (laughs) She was like, when are you just going to ask for help? Oh, to which I replied, get out. (laughs) <laughs> well, for sure. Sorry. And I kicked, don't mean and I kicked her I out you. of the hospital room. I did. I did. And it's one of my biggest. And I've made an amends. And she's like, oh, my God, whatever. Like dealing with a sick alcoholic. Like, of course, you're not going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to ask for help right now. Right. Like, <laughs> sure. She understood, you know, and I still feel bad about that. But, um, you know, that that story comes into play a lot. Like when I am in a situation that I don't feel I can work my way out of. Right. And I, I always hear, when are you just going to ask for help? You know? And, Mm. and I thought asking for help looked a lot like I'm going to ask you for help. And then you're going to do that for me for not, you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't assist me in this, but do it for me. You know, I'm the youngest of three. Um, I, I have a lot of family members that love me so much and will just do stuff for me, whether they don't want to hear me, bitch. (laughs) something like that, you know, whatever. But when it came to like getting help, you know, and I don't know, right. Like I was in this fog. I'm not even really sure. I talked about it. I don't know how I ended up where I got, you know, with rehab. Um, But the story that I'm told is that I did ask for help in a drunken drugged up stupor. I did ask for help to which parents, siblings were, um, they knew what to do already. Right. Because they had been prefaced with all this stuff. Like she needs help. This is what we do, like whatever. And, and so when the moment came right, that I was in rehab 12 hours later, like that is how it worked for me. You know, I was, I was in rehab 12 hours later and I don't, I wish that I could be like, Oh yeah. Like I had this moment and I did right. The moment was, I do remember very slightly like looking for the shotgun. Right. Cause that's my story. And you know, going downstairs and, you know, being like, I, I, I need help. And that that's the story that I remember. Now it it was explained to me that I was a little bit more elaborate than that, but you know, I can't tell a story that I don't remember. Maybe I'll have a, my sister or parent as a guest host or something. (laughs) Share share what they they remember. Like, right. But that was that, um, that's that surrender too. like asking for help is a lot of being like, knowing that what you're up against is a lot bigger than you and that you can't do it on your own. And I, and I've known that from day one, you know, from day one of getting into rehab, you know, if I thought I could get sober on my own, I wouldn't have been in rehab, but I had tried, you know, so I knew I needed help in that very literal sense. I needed help to like be away from the drugs and alcohol because I I did try to get sober every now and again by myself, you know, and that never worked out. And, you know, I'm a big advocate for like, if you are drinking and drugging and you want to quit, it is probably best to ask for help because you physically put yourself in a lot of danger detoxing. And, you know, there's like a whole medical thing. It's not just your willpower. Oh, let me see if I can do it. Like it is a dangerous thing to come off of drugs and alcohol by yourself. For sure. Yeah. You you know, know, and that could cause more harm. 
Yeah. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, you mentioned surrender and asking for help. And that I think was the biggest problem for me. You know, I have control issues and actually yeah. I don't have control issues. Other people have issues with my need to control things. I'm going right. to go on the record. <laughs> it's not really my problem. It's, it's other your people. problem. <laughs> right. You know, or so I thought. Right. right. And, that, and that's kind of what it comes down to. And that's what it felt like for me. Um getting sober, you know, or physically sober. And I, I want to keep saying that because it's super important, you know, like my just being dry, my not putting I was physically sober. I was not mentally or emotionally sober in any way, straight, you know, straight, in any way. And, right, and no so all, there. yeah, no, none, you know, it was just physical sobriety and it, and it was too big, you know, but I thought I had it under control. And my story goes, you know, that every time I made a geographical move, every time I ended a relationship, every time I, you know, put those things down, I always went back because there was nothing else. There was nothing else. And it was too big for me. And I was, you know, again, aside from the control thing, you know, I've got a huge ego, right. And I can do it. And you know, hence the going back out. It's kind of what it looks like, right? I had to admit that I was, I did not have control over this, you know, and God put me in a place, right? And I, you know, my higher power, whatever, you know, people call him God, Allah, Buddha, fates, what universe, I don't care, you know, something bigger than myself, put me in a place to look at myself and sit with myself in pain, physical from a surgery, right? And emotional, no drugs or alcohol in order to make that better. And that was when, like I said, that pain was that turning point, you know, and I didn't look at it like asking for help, you know, because I didn't say, can you help me? I was just right. explaining what was going on. Right. I when you had a solution, hoping sure. you would say something that I would be willing, right. Willing to latch on to and do for sure. And that's the thing, you know, like I'm going to find a loophole. It's how my brain works. You know, I'm not really asking you for help, but I want help. And I also, you know, and that's what struck me is that you're like, you know, having people do it for me. That's why I laughed. Cause I was like, Hmm, wonder how that looks because I'm always like, you don't know what to do here. Let me do it. Right. I'm, I'm the do it for you person. Right. Right. And so, uh, you know, I think it's interesting that I, you know, because I haven't thought about that in a while, you know, and I'm looking back and I'm thinking, I didn't think I was asking for help, but that was really the point where I asked for help. You know, the good news is, is I did, right? Because even after trying this thing and then being unsuccessful, I then knew where to go to ask again. And and I do ask today. I think that that's really an important thing. You know, I'm talking about all of the not so great qualities, you know, that prevent me from asking and prevent me from surrendering and, you know, prevent me from, you know, letting go of that control. And that's not what it looks like today all the time. I mean, for sure it can happen because, you know, we talked about this morning, you know, before we jumped on old habits die hard. However, um, I'm aware today, you know, I, I am aware of those things and that's, that is one of the gifts of recovery. Yeah. Well, it's knowing when you're out of your league, right? Mm, Like there's so many things I had to like get over. You know, I, I, I did, I did think I knew everything. Like that was a genuine thing, right? Like I thought I knew how everything I had thought I had it all figured out, you know, and I not, not even in an arrogant way, just in like an ignorant way, like lack of knowledge, like just, you know, just because I think it doesn't make it so, you know, and I had to come in here And when I got into recovery, like learned that, that I don't know everything. I don't even know myself. Right. I can't even believe the own thought, my own thoughts in my head sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I've got to like run that stuff past you and be like, what do you think about this? Right. And it could be as simple and it could just, you know, the asking for help can be as simple as just like, help me sort out this thought. Right. Because I think this is this real? Seems a li- right. Is this real? This seems a little intense, you know, and um, and that's probably been one of the best things that I was taught in, you know, and I learned I did. I learned that in rehab, you know, I reference rehab a lot because I just learned a lot in the asking for help. Right. If I don't know how to do something, there is no shame in asking for help. And if I've never done something before, of course, I'm not going to know how to do it. Right. So if I'm entering this recovery world, I probably want to talk to some people who have done this before. And what does that look like? You know, and there is not a day that goes by that I, 
couldn't benefit from asking somebody for help. I just can't expect the person to do the thing for me, right? Because nobody can do this journey for me. You know, I have to be willing to say like, hey, I don't know. And I used to think that there was a lot of shame in saying like, I don't know how to do this thing, right? I always thought that you expected me to know how to do everything. And I don't. And there is so much power and I love it. It's, it's a great gift to be given to say, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. But I have the I ability. Some, to say, I know somebody who does. I Google, right. I can Google. Oh, right. Right. Say, or call somebody who's got 40 years. Call, sober for sure. Right. Right. Like, I can call somebody who does. And that is, that is priceless. That is such a priceless gift to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, can you help me? Right. And people are people love to help other people. I don't care what you say, because people love being in a position. And I know. And let me show you. you Right. Right. I mean, we've had the conversations, you know, are you venting or do you? you know, you want some feedback, right? Because, because I'm listening and I'm like, Hmm, I know some stuff. Um, I got to lay this on her, but if she's not, here's the thing, but if you're just venting, ain't nobody going to want to listen, right? Right. Like you just want to get some shit off your chest. You know, it's interesting to me is like that not cutting, you were talking about, you know, saying, I don't know. And the power that, that, that wields in and of itself, right? It relieves me of having to fix you. It relieves me of having to, something I don't know, you know, and it's interesting. And it's so funny to me is that, you know, in my previous career, you know, leading 20 people, you know, and, and having these conversations and saying, there's nothing is, you know, there's no stupid questions. Right. And I believe that with my whole heart, but I don't uh, know. <laughs> well, you know, but here's the thing. You, you, if you don't know, you don't know. Right. right. Like, so there's really not a stupid question. Here's the thing. I would rather you ask me something. If I have the answer, let me impart that little bit that I got that I can give to you, you know, and then you take that and do what you want, you know, and it's just interesting, you know, like in this corporate world and doing all of these things, there is no such thing as a stupid question. I want you to succeed. So I'm going to help you. Right. But what happens is, is that when I don't have the answer, I feel my questions are stupid. You know, you put me in this element where, like, you know, thinking I know everything and it's not it, for me, it's not ignorant. It's just all ego. I, you know, here, I'm just going to come clean about it. Right. You may not even expect me to know, but I sure the fuck think I need to know. Right. Right. You know, I need to well, be the big shot and that big shot is some kind of shit. And yeah, you know, but I have to remind myself if I'm going to tell you, if I'm going to tell 20 people, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Then why the hell am I not going to tell myself there's no such thing as a stupid question. Right. Yeah. And I need help and I need answers. You know, it's okay. Yeah, no. And I, I do. I think that that's probably one of the best pieces of advice. Like anybody can give you like when you're embarking in anything, right? Like when I first started my job, right? right. I don't know something, right? Like if I don't know how to do this, you know, X, Y, Z, fill in the blank there. And I ask somebody like, I'm better off for it. You know, it, Instead of trying to figure something out, because I've made some mistakes with that ego thinking that I know I can figure it out. I can figure it out. And then I make it 10 times harder on myself because, you know, you've got a shortcut to it, right? right? You've got a way less painful path than I do by trying to figure it out on my own, you know, and I, and I don't, I mean, there's no harm in trying to figure things out on your own either. But when we're talking in regards to recovery and doing this thing, because the consequence, the coping mechanism is so damaging, right? Like sure. if you are walking down this road of recovery and your natural reaction is to drink over something, that's like a, that's a high risk. That's a dangerous consequence for like not knowing something, right? Like it's, right. it's not like a bank fee, you know, it's, it is, it's your life or death, you know? Life so when the risk is so high, like what is it to just ask for a little bit of help? You know, you're embarking on this new world and there's a lot to know, right? What is, what do things look like at the holidays, weddings, families, like people, places, things, right? Like all of these things, what do I do? You know, how do I embark on my daily life? Having removed this, this coping mechanism, coping mechanism, right? right? It's the only coping mechanism, right? Right. Yeah. I don't, you know, right. Vodka, you know, and they, 
they didn't leave me, right? They yeah. always seem to have the answer. And then that was, you know, that was, that was the thing, right? But I think it's interesting, you know, in the corporate world, and they talk about these things like setting yourself up for success, you know, right. and I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what that looked like. You know, I just barreled through and, 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 and it didn't wind up well, right? Because it was, it was my life on the line. And so when I realized in order to set myself up for success and recovery, I had to get a little bit I had to get a little bit humble. I had to get out of my way a little bit. Well, and that's exactly what it is, right? Right size me so I can hear what you have to say and and really take it. Yeah. Ask for help. And then that's the kicker. And listen, though, right? Like right, the ask listening for help and then be willing to do right. the thing, the suggestion, whatever it is. Like, you know, do, oh, thanks for the sound advice, but I'm gonna continue to do it my way because I've done that too. Oh, for sure. I asked for yeah. help yeah. and then been like. Mm, I think I want to do it my way. And I will tell you 100% of the time I pay the price and I'm wishing I would have done what the person told me to do. Right. Not because, not because they're better than me or smarter than me, but it's because they've been there. And that makes me think about like all the times my parents would tell me things, right? Oh, Don't parents. This, which fucking <laughs> pisses me off more than anything. And I'm not listening to you because whatever, you know, because, because I know and you don't. And they're not coming from a place of I'm better than you. It's just I've got more experience, right? I've done right. that. I, I did I've that. Had, and they're right? done that. Bought and the they're done that. Right. And that's and that's just the thing, you know, right? Which makes me just cringe, and I'll never show them this episode because you know, <laughs> God forbid. But I can remember all the times, you know, and it's it's the unsolicited advice that we can't take, you know, like sure. it's um. You know, if I come to you and ask you something, I'm a lot better to receive it than you just telling me what needs to be done, you know? Right. And so I try to remember that too. Like if people aren't asking for my help, I'm not giving it. You, right. you need some help? Ask me. Or I will ask you, do you need some help? Not, hey, maybe you should do it this way, you know, because they're for sure doing it the opposite way then. Right. They're, they're going to sure. be like, this bitch don't know. Right. right. You don't know nothing. Right. But, exactly. um, but it, it's really true. Right. I think, like you said, it's getting right size, being a little bit humble, you know, and, and embracing the freedom that comes along with not knowing and take, you know, it takes the pressure off of me. Right. It takes the pressure off of me when I ask you for help and you give me clear suggestions and then I do those and I just do it step by step. It it takes the pressure off of me. Yeah. Because I don't have to do all the thinking. It's not my idea, right? Like right. God forbid it doesn't work, which has not been my experience, right? right? When people have told me stuff that's worked. But if it doesn't, I have that like in my back pocket, right? I get to blame you. <laughs> I get to blame you. <laughs> this is not on me this time. Right. Man. I listened to you. You fucked this shit up. It was not right. me, right? Yeah. And that gives me a certain amount of freedom. You know, and, and I'll tell you, that's another thing. And th- that's the, one of those loopholes. That's one of those loopholes that I talked yeah. about that I will find is that I'm willing to do what you said. If for no other reason, my motive is to prove you wrong. And then when it works, I'm like, hmm, all right, <laughs> I'll ask again. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, that's important too. Like I was just thinking, you know, who am I asking for help from? Mm. Right. I need to be careful who I'm asking, you know, help from. And I, and I think that I want to say that kind of goes without saying, but you know, if you're not someone who's good with your money, I'm not asking you for financial advice. Right. Right. If you're not someone who's been able to maintain some sort of sobriety and work through recovery, I'm not asking you how to stay sober. Right. I may be asking you what you're doing. So I know what not to do. Sure. Right. And That's you know what I mean? Because we all have our strengths, right? And here's the thing. Days are going to be days, right? Not everything's going to be a million bucks. If I don't drink or use today, I consider myself a success, no matter sure. what the day looks like, right? But here's the thing. You know, if I can string together a few 24 hours, you know, and, and I hang around long enough and ask for the help and listen to the suggestions and see what other people are doing who are succeeding at this thing, it's a safe bet, right? I won't right. do that. If I continue to chase this the way I chase the drugs, the way I chase the booze and we've all heard it and we've all said it, then it's a good chance that I won't drink today. Right. And so those are the things that I need to remember. And you're absolutely correct. If I am looking to stay sober and and I keep talking to somebody who can only put together like two or three days, and I'm not saying only in a bad way. Right. But there's, you know, if you want longevity, you're not going to the person that can can go back to the bar for a handful of days. Right. 
You know, you're looking at the person who hasn't picked up a drink in 40 years, you know, hasn't picked up a drink in 10 years or, you know, even a year. I mean, any amount of time. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. You know, because I need to remember, right. You know, I can remember my story and laugh and, you know, and joke around about it now, but I need to remember the horror part of it. Right. Because it was yeah, sure it was fun and games until it wasn't, you know, and I need to remember right. that too. So there are people who have six months and a year sober that I need to hear. So, Hell yeah, you know, for sure. Asking All for right. help. Do it. Do it. Answer. Just do Just it. Do if it, you people. need help, you can like and comment down here. We'll be happy. happy, <laughs> yeah, happy, we, happy, happy, happy we got happy, suggestions for day. Uh, we got it. I got, I got all the answers, you know, until I don't have the answers. Until I don't have the answers. Um, hey, maybe you could give us some answers. Right. Yeah. Comment yeah. below. We need help. Yeah. <laughs> As you can tell. You can uh, tell. So, yeah. All right. Ask for help. No stupid questions. Trusted advisor. Trusted advisor. Yeah, I think that that's sums it up. I'm sure All we'll right. hit on this one again. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. Keep coming back. <laughs> Keep coming back. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification button so you'll know as soon as a new post goes up. Have a good one.